Are you having nagging, ongoing joint pain? Maybe your hands, maybe your knees, maybe your hips, the pain that you're talking up to, maybe just getting older. What if it's not actually just getting older? What if it's not arthritis? What if it's your body's early warning sign, a hidden sign of something more dangerous called iron overload? My name's Dr. Taranella, and I'm here to help you optimize and improve your health. Today, we're uncovering the truth about a often overlooked key cause of joint pain that many experience with aging. By the end of this video, you'll understand why your joints might be aching from perhaps iron and recognize why this one symptom is critical to preventing more damage to your body and to your organs. Okay, so here's the truth that you absolutely need to know about iron overload symptoms. Most of the damage is going to be silent. So your liver, your heart, your pancreas, they can be accumulating toxic levels of iron for many, many years without even noticing anything on lab work or sending a signal about pain or anything. So the organs tend to take on and accumulate that iron silently and the damage that's occurring there too. But one of the first and most common clues or symptoms that you are having iron overload in terms of symptoms is joint pain. The achiness in the joints is one of the first clues or signals that something could be going on here. So while your organs like your liver, et cetera, kind of suffer in silence and there's no real evidence that there's problems going on there, your joints often do show signals. So understanding this is key to catching the massive problem of iron overload and hemochromatosis before there's too much damage gone on to your other organs like your liver, heart, pancreas, etc. So there's a lot to understand with iron overload and hemochromatosis and understanding the lab metrics and symptoms is a lot to remember. And I do have a playlist that goes into lots of detail on iron overload and hemochromatosis. If you want to check that out, there'll be a link in the description. All right, so let's take a look at how this actually occurs. Why does iron, a nutrient that your body definitely needs in certain amounts, start to attack your joints. The science here is actually quite interesting. So it comes down to a destructive process involving accumulation of crystals in the joints. Accumulation of the iron in the joints creates a perfect storm that leads to formation of this crystallization called calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate or CPPD for short. And it's not just a random association, it's actually a causative factor from iron accumulating and promoting the growth of these through several different mechanisms. The first is that iron, when it accumulates to a certain level, can interfere with the enzymes that actually break down these crystals. With the deactivation of that enzyme, those crystals start to build up. And in this case, the cleaning crew is basically disabled or sidelined. The other piece of it is as the cleaning crew is sidelined and it's building up, the active accumulation of iron directly enhances or acts like a catalyst accelerating the growth of these DPPD crystals. So you have the buildup here, lack of breakdown, and an acceleration of that buildup. So it's a double whammy. The result is you have tiny, sharp little inflammatory crystals inside the joint space, and that's known as pseudogout. Regular gout is when those crystals are of a different form coming from uric acid. And so we have this crystal formation is one part of it, but you also have increased inflammation from the iron itself. So it's kind of like a double whammy. You have the oxidative damage, which happens just from iron oxidizing, just like rusting outside. When you have iron ore sitting outside, it's going to rust. That same kind of process is happening inside our bodies when you have too much iron. We also have these pseudo gout crystals forming in increasing abundance as well. And this can lead to something known as the iron fist. Now the joint pain isn't random. While it can affect your hips, knees, and wrists, the hallmark sign of hemochromatosis in terms of the joints being affected is going to be in the hands. And it often will affect the second and third digits. And it's going to create stiffness, swelling, and sometimes bony growth in the large knuckles of the first and second digits. And this pattern is so common that is often referred to as the iron fist. When you're looking at imaging studies, there's a classic hook like osteophytes on these specific joints. 
So if you have this going on, when you get an x-ray done because you're having joint pain, it's definitely a massive diagnostic clue and often is the leading indication that you might have hemochromatosis. Sometimes years before, more damage becomes obvious. So the point is, if your hands are aching in this specific way, whether it's all your digits or especially your second and third digit, you should at least be thinking about iron. Now, of course, hand joints can ache for a lot of different reasons, and osteoarthritis is one of the most common reasons, degenerative arthritis. But hemochromatosis is also quite common, or at least not rare. About one in 300 people are affected by this, and it's predominantly going to be Northern European descent that's going to have these kind of hemochromatosis genetics. But it's not exclusive to this demographic. So now remember, while your joint aches and your second and third digit may not be a super priority for you, the same iron that's in those iron crystals that are accumulating there can also be accumulating other places silently. And so some other symptoms or problems that you may see is fatigue. Fatigue is common to a lot of different conditions, so it's very nonspecific symptom, but along with the joint pain, it might raise some additional red flags. Liver damage is also the first place where iron does start to accumulate and store. So this damage is often silent as well and until the accumulation is more advanced. You can also have heart palpitations and in later stages, it can lead to heart failure. There can also be damage to sex organs like the testes and possibly ovaries too, but it is more common in males and females. And it can also affect your pancreas leading to something known as bronze diabetes affecting your blood sugar. So the point is, it's kind of happening across the board in all of your body, all of your tissues. It doesn't necessarily select just the joints and the fingers. It's going to be depositing wherever it can to bring those iron levels down in the blood. So it's not having as much damage as the iron is circulating around. We want to get it into the storage places. Unfortunately, that storage mechanism then ends up damaging those tissues where it starts to accumulate. And this is why it's such a good idea to pay attention to joint pain and get a clear diagnosis for what's causing that to rule out hemochromatosis. It's a early warning signal, perhaps, and the mantra you should remember is don't guess, but test. And of course, the frustrating part is all these symptoms can have a lot of different causes, but testing certainly helps us understand this. And the testing is actually quite simple and inexpensive. And I'm amazed how often I find positive indicators of iron overload in my patients just running some very basic tests. So the first one you would definitely want to do is ferritin, and this is measuring your body's total storage form of iron. And in cases where you do have iron overload, this is going to be elevated. Also, the transferrin saturation measures how full your iron transport proteins are as they're circulating around in your blood. The more saturated that iron is, think of it like a horseshoe, the more irons that get on the ringer of that horseshoe they're going to start to fall off and that's where the damage starts to occur. And so if you have a high percentage of iron saturation or transferrin saturation, that's oftentimes one of the earliest indicators of hemochromatosis and iron overload. From there, then your doctor can do the genetic test to confirm, yes, this is what's going on or perhaps no, you don't have that, you're just consuming too much iron. So remember, connecting the dots on your joint pain to potential iron issue is the first step. And to help you understand some of the more nuances of that, check out that playlist on iron overload and hemochromatosis. There'll be a link in the description. So the truth about iron overload and hemochromatosis is that the symptoms are often vague or silent, but joint pain, especially in the knuckles of your second, third digit, is oftentimes the first indication. It's the loudest alarm bell, if you will. This pain, in some cases, is driven by iron's direct toxicity and promotion of those crystals that are promoted by the accumulation of iron. So don't just guess or blame it on iron. We want to test that ferritin, test that iron saturation. So if you do get tested and find out you do have iron overload, the next logical step is what's the fix? The primary treatment for this is often therapeutic blood donation, but there's a right way to do this and a wrong way to do this. That's why your next step is to watch this video right here. When should you donate blood? Harm versus health.